Hey guys, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be updated every time I make a new video. Thanks, let's begin. Discovered in 1997, causing terror in 2004. Snake Head Terror. This was the first in a few films to be inspired by the real life snake head incident, or better yet, infestation, in the Potomac River in Maryland and Virginia back in the early 2000s. Yes, I watched all three. There was Night of the Snaked Fish, I think, and then there's Frankenfish, as well as this one. I'm not going to be reviewing Night of the Snaked Fish. I actually watched it a long time ago, then I watched it again recently, and, uh, it's like a fan film from the early 2000s. Ah, uh, probably not your cup of tea. Probably is for some, but I didn't have time to write a review for it because I have so many other reviews to do, so I figured I'll just leave it out. Sorry. Also, make sure to check out my previous review for Humanoids from the Deep, the 1996 remake. Let's get into it. The plot. So, after the poisoning of the lake, things have been quite quiet at this sleepy town. And uh, all of a sudden, the snakeheads come back. There is a reason. And it's actually kind of cool. Not totally original, but well handled. Uh, but people are being torn apart now. Limb from limb in the scene of terror. This, along with the other two, follow the events after the poisoning of the lake. This one treats it like the lake that they're actually at is the one where they had poisoned it, but it's not even filmed near there. So it's not the same lake, even if it pretends to be. But it's a movie, you gotta let that kind of stuff go. For the characters, we have Patrick James, played by Bruce Boxelinter. Or Boxelinter. How the hell do you say his last name? He is the sheriff around these parts. He has a daughter. He's trying to get everything under control. But the snakeheads just keep on attacking. Lori Dale, played by Carol Alt, comes in to try to figure out what's going on. And when she does, it might be too late. Amber James, played by Shellan Simons. She's been in a lot of horror movies, though, such as Chupacabra Terror, Final Destination 3, Ogre, Malibu Shark Attack, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, and See No Evil 2. She is the daughter of Patrick, and she has a boyfriend that dies in the opening scene, which is actually pretty sad. She also ends up going after the fish with her friends, which proves to be the dumbest decision in the whole movie. And chaos ensues. <laughs> Laughable chaos, because all this stuff could have been prevented. And lastly, we have Doc Jenkins, played by William B. Davis. He is the town doctor. He has a brother who works at a bait and tackle shop, and yeah, he's a little bit shady. He doesn't seem shady, but when it gets to the nitty gritty of everything, yeah, he's shady. This was directed by Paul Ziller, who also went on to direct Beyond Loch Ness, Yeti, Curse of the Snow Demon, and another movie that'll be on this theme week, Sea Beast. He directed this motion picture, and he does love to work with beautiful mountains and wide open lakes. I applaud him for that. It's not a uh, totally by the book. It's got its it's got beautiful views and everything. Back when sci fi gave a crap about cinematography. British Columbia, Canada makes for some nice landscapes to film your killer fish movie in. This movie almost goes Jaws, but thankfully it holds back on that angle and just gives us the snakeheads. It could have been nobody got to close down the beaches, but it doesn't have to come to that. They actually are able to avoid it. The gore, the effects, lots of great practical stuff here. There's a blinking decapitated head, which I always appreciate ever since I saw Wolfen when I was like eight years old. We also get severed limbs galore. Red water, gory chunks of fish are flung everywhere. A snake head is actually cut up in a boat propeller, which is a nasty little piece. And there's some more. The fish are brought to life using puppets, which are kind of meshy and uh, gooey looking, but to get the job done. 
The CGI ones are okay at best by 2004 standards. Today they look like crap. The motion picture soundtrack, much like Ron Turn 3 Left for Dead, this has some X Files esque themes. Ken Williams, who also composed Deep Freeze, does bring some good stuff to this movie's music, though. There are some heartfelt themes, however, some of the action themes are a bit weak. This is a favorite amongst fans of old-school sci-fi channel films. While I do enjoy it, it's not my favorite. I felt like several storylines didn't really either go anywhere or lead to anything, like the huge snakehead at the end, or the town's lack of business. Also, the teens in this movie are seriously dim-witted. Still, I would check it out, and re I do recommend it. It's got some cool stuff like gore and action, as well as being a neat little fictional continuation to the events that happened prior to this movie. The water bubbles with blood, and then the lake returns to its calm state, awaiting for me to review the next killer fishy. Overall, I give Snakehead Terror a 2 out of 5. Thank you all for watching, and, uh, well, you know, Lion Brian Gatto, the horror show host. Make sure to like, comment on, as well as share this video. Like my Facebook fan page, and support me on Patreon, where even a dollar a month will help keep this channel going on strong, and I'd greatly appreciate it. Plus, you get access to body counts and other music videos that you can't get on YouTube because of copyright and age restriction. Also, hits the notification bell to be notified every time I make a new video. And as always, subscribe!